Uh, hello, SRW here today, talking about John Mouse's exclusion, axing, booting, whatever you want to say, from New York City's Electronicon Festival. And uh, basically, it's hard to even glean information about what happened from the reports that have come out. I mean, you read them, and usually you're looking, you're skimming, looking for that piece of information, like, oh, there's the uh, smoking gun, but there, it doesn't seem obvious here. It's just like, people felt unsafe about his inclusion, and uh, we're going to part ways, and that's that. Ring our hands. Okay. Uh, I guess it's about uh, him going to the Trump thing, which they didn't even know it was going to be an insurrection. You know, sometimes people do things that aren't obvious reasons to the general public. Somebody might just want to go to a event of a president happening or uh, a juggalo event just to see what's going on with it. I've done shit like that, you know. So basically, he's into being vague. He's into I'm not like that. He's a different kind of cat. I'll just tell you what the fuck I'm about and what's going on. But he's into being mysterious and stuff. So he went to this event for mysterious, uh, not obvious reasons. And uh, I guess that's it, you know. Uh, he's dabbled into left-wing politics. He's dabbled into right-wing stuff. You know, artists sometimes are temperamental people. Like Bowie was doing the Nazi stuff for a while, and some people raspberried on it. But basically, he went through a phase, and then people left him alone, and he went on to grace us with more great artwork. So, you know, uh, as long as people don't have a track record of uh, the clear and present danger, look at the results. You'll know them by the fruit to do a Bible thing in this vibe of John Mel. You know, like, uh, look at the man's family. Okay, murder, when we let him do his thing, murder happened. So let's, let's discourage that. Or screwdriver, we know what's going to happen there. It's a pretty good idea. So let's not put them in the LGBT thing. But this is sort of a vague, uh, is it like uh, the other idea? You know, basically, uh, I think about it like people uh, on the right wing, they sit in their houses and they don't go out into the public and intermingle. Or they don't go outside of their own uh, safety, comfort, bubble zone. And the idea, they get the idea of the other in their mind, and uh, it festers and germinates and grows uh, branches out of it and stuff. And now it's this whole mental psych out thing, you know, where the other is to be avoided or eradicated at all costs, you know. This is like an ideological purity thing, basically, like uh, we will accept an inferior artist who we don't like as much, basically, on the premise that they're more ideologically pure. And I don't know that that's the best way to organize culture. If you feel like that is, I mean, get at me in the comments and we'll talk about it. But basically, uh, you know, I think about waves of culture. You think about how it was, uh, you know, 50s, maybe to like the 90s or 2000s, it was a right-wing stronghold, Christian fundamentalist. And people on the other side of that sort of laughed at it. And that begged uh, cause and effect for a counter movement to occur. And I think it's almost to that point with the left wing. You know, it's like uh, uh, Jim Morrison, the uh, society will collapse under the weight of his reference of a marijuana cigarette or Elvis shaking his hips is going to corrupt the youth. And basically, the left wing is sort of taking up that mantle. In some cases, it's totally justified. In an event where somebody's actively, uh, you know, in a organized way, funding the oppression or creating an ide ideology that spurs violence in its wake. And uh, it, it wasn't totally obvious that he was supporting Trump in that capacity. He just vaguely, mysteriously went to an event and went about his merry way. So, uh, I'm not trying to be mean to y'all, but if this is the hardest shit you've got to deal with in life, the rest of this planet is going to fuck you up. It gets a lot harder from here, folks, and you can't always, uh, you know, I, I never uh, shied away from uh, conflicting opinions or anything like that. I could feel comfortable on MSNBC as I could on Fox News. You know, basically, if your ideas have merit or your philosophy has a foundation underneath it, it shouldn't collapse, uh, you know, under the weight of a conflicting opinion. If what you're saying is, but basically just to eradicate and shut down the other you know, on the idea of being the other. I don't know that it's the best way to organize a society. And uh, if you don't want to go to the show, fine, don't support it. But th like sitting at home, like homing missiles, like, oh, he's going to London. We should fuck that up too, you know? Basically, he shouldn't be allowed to do this. I think that's a slippery slope because we can look at history, historical trajectories, and basically it says to us that, you know, uh, philosophies and things come and go in waves. That's the, uh, I never liked the two-party system, but y'all are dead set on it for some reason. So that duality, it, it asks for another side of the coin to exist and it's sort of like we have white blood cells in our body fighting each other maybe it's inherent to uh you know base reality that things are uh, clashing and fighting with each other but i don't think it has to be that way but sort of uh, asking for a counter movement to spring up against it and um is it a sort of a thing you could uh maybe think of it that it's possible that you know it was a right-wing stronghold. I think it's pretty safe to say that culture is left-owned at this point. The left owns the culture and uh, makes the rules about it. And uh, just the fact of that, whatever you're doing better be the best thing for society or, you know, people beyond ideology or philosophical rumination 
will eventually get tired of it and something else is going to happen. And then if it does happen in that event, you know, the uh, you shall know them by their fruit to do a biblical John Malsvane type thing. You know, what what did your uh, movement create? So it could be that, uh, you know, if you created that those conditions of, uh, you know, shutting things down and stifling discussion, it could be that in the next wave, if there's a big right wing takeover, it could be... Uh, was it you were wearing a Bernie shirt 20 years ago or you had a Che Guevara shirt on or whatever? You attended this rally of a left-wing person. Now we're shutting down your ability to do art, express yourself, make a living doing it. And in the name of ideological purity, like, uh, you know, tilling the garden. We're, we're eradicating all the weeds out of here until we create the perfect world that is just for us. I don't know if that's the best way to do a culture. If you think it is, or, you know, is the threat clear and present with this guy? I mean, does he have a track record of that?